The Bahrain GP didn't go exactly in the way Mercedes would have planned it out for themselves, and it seems like the Brackley-based squad would be in for yet another difficult campaign ahead of themselves. The only difference here is that they won't have the support of the seven-time world champion from 2025 onwards, and the car doesn't seem to have improved a tiny bit from where they were last year, apart from all of the positive comments this weekend prior to the race. With this in mind, Mercedes is in deep trouble when it comes to bringing the team back to its glory days. And more importantly, what is wrong with the W15 to the point of Russell losing out to both Ferraris after climbing to P3 very early in the race? The first race of the season went exactly how Mercedes hoped it wouldn't, both of their cars finishing behind Ferrari and Red Bull. And while the fight with Verstappen and Perez was a bit of a far-fetched scenario for the team before the season even started, they couldn't have hoped for such a race against the Maranello team. Science's motivation is definitely driven off the wheels, and the hope of the Mercedes drivers as the smooth operator made a strong statement on Russell, while Hamilton was nowhere near the mix due to a mixture of issues, starting with the battery of the car, ending with the seat being broken. This is quite a bizarre issue to report because, if you recall correctly, this was one of the primary things that the W15 was focused on fixing, having the cockpit placed 100mm behind compared to its predecessor. But you cannot just easily move a seat like that in an F1 car. It takes a redesign of the entire chassis and reshuffling some of the components. And it could very well mean that while trying to fix one problem, Mercedes have found themselves in the same loophole from the past two years, where by fixing one issue, they're subsequently either discovering or creating a new issue with the car. From this point of view, everybody could start to understand why Hamilton made the move he did. Although it's worth mentioning that the 2024 car was fixed more to his suits, so he has either given terribly wrong feedback to the Brackley-based engineers, which is the less likely scenario, or the fact that the team didn't listen to him very early in 2022 has led to this scenario happening eventually in the later stages of the current era. When talking about the first race of the season, one that was supposed to go in Hamilton's way due to his setup, the Brit was quite satisfied with starting P9 due to the fact that his W15 was set up for race pace conditions something that he cannot be satisfied with after finishing in between both McLaren drivers at P7. What's even worse for Mercedes is that they cannot count on the help of the seven-time world champion for the current season, because he won't be that present when the car starts to receive its upgrades, because no matter how you look at it, the team is at a loss. If they decide to use Hamilton's help and it turns out to be quite a good need, it's very likely that Hamilton will take this knowledge to Ferrari and backstab his own team. On the other hand, if Russell doesn't manage to extract the maximum potential out of the current version of the car and continues with the struggles, then it's likely that the team is doing nothing but tapping into the same place for three consecutive years. And no matter what they do, they just do not seem to understand the current regulations. The more depressing fact is that Russell was able to take advantage of Leclerc's brake issues earlier in the race and was prompted to P2 thanks to the lockups from the Monegasque driver. However, he was nowhere near to Verstappen and the fight for P1 was disbanded immediately. To worsen things to a further extent, Russell was not able to make a solid advantage ahead of the pack that were following him, so it all led to Sainz and Perez passing him in the early stages of the race, while Leclerc utilised the fact that Russell's car had to be tuned down in order to make it to the end, and costing him four tenths per second every lap. These were his words, and if they are to believe, then the Brit would have been in the mix with Sainz for the P3 fight. According to Russell, it's a shame that Mercedes didn't get to show the real potential of the car, which blistered through the FP2 when both drivers finished 1-2 and were super close in race pace compared to Red Bull, and also better than Ferrari in this aspect. However, none of that translated in the race, and the Brackley-based squad is likely back to ground zero. An important issue that Mercedes has reported is the cooling of the car, especially in hot air and according to both Russell and Hamilton, they weren't able to be very close for a longer period of time behind a car because the engine would have overheated from the turbulent air coming from the car ahead. This could be easily linked to the new design of the car, or more precisely, to the inlets of the side pods that lead to the radiators. One of the biggest changes that Mercedes made with the W15. And while there is still a lot of learning to do in this regard, the initial signs are very disappointing, and this is exactly what Mercedes tried to avoid after the first couple of days from this racing weekend. However, it's not all dark for the Silver Arrows, and luckily for them, they have some bright spots to be looking at from Sunday's racing event. The good news is that McLaren do not seem as competitive as they would have hoped for after finishing the 2023 season on a strong note, but the Woking-based squad knew that Bahrain wouldn't be a track on which they would be able to show their strongest performance either. Another bit of good news for Mercedes is that Aston Martin seems to have a decent amount of struggles that won't challenge them in the upcoming period. But they could never bet against such a scenario, considering that these are two teams that prove that they can make improvements in a very short period. 
unlike Mercedes, which has constantly found itself at the receiving end of things ever since the 2022 season started. Naomi Schiff from Sky One has analyzed the current situation in Mercedes, and according to her, this is the harsh reality of the team and we just have to live with it. Elaborating, Hamilton even mentioned that his seat was broken. There was a lot that they were dealing with. They seemed optimistic, at least Lewis did. This is now the bitter reality. We've seen the car's performance in qualifying and in the race. I think they have made a step forward because the drivers have told us that the grip is tighter. But if you look at the performance of the Red Bulls, Mercedes are still quite a while away. It means they will still have to work on this concept. They've only had this concept for a couple of weeks on track, while some teams in this paddock have had this concept for two years. They're still in the learning phase of how to really lock in the performance. It seems that the learning phase and data collection process doesn't end for Mercedes, and while it's super early to draw conclusions from just one race, considering the fact that nothing much has changed from the previous two years, the team is going to receive a lot of critiques for where they finished compared to where the projections were. During the pre-season testing as well as the free practice sessions, the W15 was on par to be on the podium, which was the case in the first half of the race. But in order for you to accomplish such a scenario, you need to have a reliable car, not one that you're poised to turn down the performance in order for it to be brought to the checkered flag. According to Damon Hill, the crucial drop in performance from Russell was the most demotivating factor in the entire weekend of Mercedes, because they've practically raised the white flag with this move, and from a situation in which the Brit would have been able to fight for a podium fight, he almost found himself losing the P5 position to Norris, who came below two seconds in the closing stages of the race. Adding to this matter even further, the 1996 world champion went on to say, Russell was making good progress, and I wondered how well he could do, but the team faded away. As Toto said, it sounds like they've got the cooling wrong and had lots of issues. They've still got lots of learnings to make about this car, and getting it right. For a car to have cooling problems on a freezing cold night, it looks like they've got this part of the equation wrong, but they are still learning. Again, luckily for Mercedes, two of what are supposed to be their fiercest competitors, McLaren and Aston Martin, are in a similar position. Lots of learning ahead of them. But if we are to look at Sainz's performance in Ferrari, it's evident that the Maranello team have the better foundation, and that the smooth operator would be making moves left and right in the SF24 in order to secure his future in the sport from 2025 onwards. With this in mind, Mercedes have found itself in a very picky situation, in which they cannot use the help of one of the most experienced drivers on the grid, who is also a seven-time world champion, six of whom came with Mercedes, and everything that they apply to the car just does not seem to work. A scenario that only cries for expert help that could be found in the likes of veterans like Alonso or Vettel. Do you think that after Aston Martin's poor start, Alonso would consider a move to Mercedes in what would be dubbed to be a win-win situation for both sides? And more importantly, where do you think Mercedes would rank in 2024? Let us know in the comments below.